Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, August. I have absolutely no idea. August the 8th. There we go. And uh, welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the daily live photography related show where I talk about whatever comes to mind photography related. Now, last week on Friday, I did a little mini photo moment where I was showing off this guy, the Lightning, Apple Lightning to SD card reader. Very, very handy if you're traveling out and about with your camera and your iPad or iPhone and do not want to have to carry a laptop with you. This guy allows you to insert into said iPod or iPad, copy the pictures off and off you go. Last week I had some troubles getting the thing to actually read the card. No idea why, it seems to be that card itself. It does work, trust me on this, I use it all the time. But I had in my, in my frustration and discombobulation, I had left off, um, one very small, important detail, or not so small. And I realized I'd kind of stopped talking about it once I said, well, just click here to import and that's it. Um, I didn't get into the what happens next. So let's talk about that a little bit. And the important, really important detail that I left out was specifically has to do with raw plus JPEG files. So, all right, let's just, let's keep it easy. Let's just say you're shooting JPEG. So you're shooting JPEG, you pop this thing into your, into your iPad or, or iPhone copy the pictures over. From there, you can open those pictures up into any one of your apps that you have on your iOS device, Snapseed or Screwit or you know, whatever you like. You know, and then you can share them out to Instagram, Facebook, all those things all works great. But what happens if you're shooting raw? Well, if you're shooting raw, the, cam uh, the computer, the laptop, the iPad or iPhone are not going to process your raw files. Now this actually might be changing coming soon, but for now they don't process the raw files. But every raw file has an embedded JPEG in it. Now, depending on the camera that you're shooting with, that embedded JPEG might be full resolution, so same size as the image. It might be half resolution, might even be smaller. I'm not sure if they get any smaller than half, but it may be full size, it may not be full size. Odds are for social media sharing, it's not gonna matter. It's just gonna be fine the way it is. What happens though with that embedded JPEG is if you have your camera set to shoot in some specific color mode, like let's say I'm shooting in vivid mode or easy way to think about it is black and white. If I'm set my camera to shoot black and white. When I look on the back of my digital camera, I see a black and white photo. Now, if I'm shooting JPEG, I get a black and white picture and that's it. But if I'm shooting raw, the raw file is color, but the embedded JPEG is going to be black and white. This is why if you were to take that raw file and open it up into Lightroom or Aperture or Photos or any number of apps, you would first see the black and white version because the software is going to first look at that embedded JPEG file. And then within seconds or less, you would see the color version because the computer will have processed that raw file, discarded that embedded JPEG, and will be now showing you the real file, the original file which can definitely be completely distracting if you're not used to this. You're just going, what happened to my black and white image? Well, that's why. So the same thing sort of happens in the iPad. The iPad or iPhone will extract that embedded JPEG file and that's what it's going to use. But since it's not processing the raw, you're not gonna see the color version. You're only gonna see the black and white as long as you're on the iPad. As soon as you open up on the desktop, it's gonna go back to the color version. Okay, so now what if you shoot both raw and JPEG? You're shooting raw plus JPEG. On the iPad or iPhone, it doesn't make any difference. You're still going to just have that black and white JPEG. You will have a full-size JPEG because that's, well, assuming that's what you've set your camera to shoot, but you'll have that full-size JPEG. But when you get back to the desktop, you will have both the raw and the JPEG side by side. Now, when you're importing into your iOS device, assuming that you have iCloud, I, iCloud Photos, Photos Cloud, whatever the heck it's called, the whole Photos Cloud syncing thing enabled, then your pictures are going to show up automatically in Photos app on your desktop. So what I wanted to show you today, well, other than explain all this, is show you what it looks like in here. So let's go to my demo system. And here are some pictures. Now, admittedly, these weren't imported from the memory card reader, but it's irrelevant. You'll see on these pictures, there's a little J on here. That tells me that this is a JPEG of a raw plus JPEG pair. And in fact, if I just hover the mouse over it, let the info thing pop up, it says raw plus JPEG, JPEG is the original. See the J there again, same thing, raw plus JPEG, JPEG is original. Now this photo here doesn't have that indicator because it is not a raw plus JPEG pair. This could be a raw, it could be a JPEG. And in fact, the only way to really know that would be to hit command I to get info on it. And that should tell me, here we go, we see that that one is a raw file. So. In this case, we've got both the raw and the JPEG, and we can choose to work with either one. Now in photos, the way that you would do that, oh, here, by the way, here's one that's already raw. So that's been switched over to raw. See, it says there, raw is original. Now the way that you switch it over is a menu command under the uh, image, where is it? Uh, yeah, here we go, under image. And you'll see here 
there's a command, but it's grayed out. It says use JPEG as original because I've selected the raw. If I select the JPEG one and I go to that, it's going to say use raw as original. But again, it's grayed out. So why is it grayed out? Because in photos, the only way to switch it is to go into the editing mode. So I'll double click it, hit the edit button. And now that I'm in editing mode, and once again up here, you see it says JPEG. If I go up here, go to the image menu, now I can choose use raw as original. It switches over to the raw and you can see that there. And it's great that I've picked a fabulously out of focus picture. Wonderful. So that, and you saw there, the image completely redrew as it processed from the, um, from the raw file. So that's what happens when you bring your pictures over to the computer via iCloud photo syncing, whatever it's called when you've shot raw plus JPEG. So you have a full raw plus JPEG workflow, which I have to say, this is very similar to the way it was in Aperture, minus the whole import into the iOS device and move it over. This is not how it's handled in Lightroom, which is one of my extreme frustrations with the app. Um, but if you're shooting with photos, if you're working with photos, you certainly have that, that capability. Now, if you're not working with photos, if you still want to import into your iOS device and get your pictures onto the desktop later, you can go into photos and then just export the originals and re-import those into whatever app you want. So that is really, really cool. So that's something that we definitely want to um, want to uh, note. So if you are working this way, you can do it like that. Other than that, um, I think that is everything. Let's see if there's is anybody have any questions about how this thing works. This, I know that I've, I've figured something out about the live um, the live streaming bit. Uh, people get notified after it starts, sometimes several minutes after. And if my broadcasts are quite short, then people aren't seeing them while I'm broadcasting them live. So uh, that's what's happening there. Later on today, by the way, I'm going to be doing a bunch, hopefully I can get to it today, a bunch of mini little broadcasts that are all just tests. Um, it would appear that something has changed inside of Facebook and that these are being broadcast at a lower resolution than they used to be, all the way down to 720p or maybe even 640. So we're going to be figuring out what's going on there because I should be broadcasting at a full 1080p right now. But that may not be happening anymore. So we're going to find out. Anyway, that is that. Uh, you know, if there's any questions, you know what to do. Drop them into the comments here. But otherwise, that was the big question that came up last week about this thing that I should have talked about but didn't. I hope that helps. Uh, I hope that you find this thing useful. I love this little thing. It's a great, great handy device. And I guess that's it. All right, guys, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.